We're going to go through an example where we are controlling one of Technique's clear path motors. It's their line of servo motors that are controlled using step and direction, much like a stepper motor. Um, when, you're, when you're setting this up, you're going to uh, be concerned with this screen here. And here you'll see you've got uh, three places where you can define uh, stepper motors you're wanting to control. In our example, we're only concerned with the uh, with one, and we're defining D1 as a step and D2 as a direction. And I've already written this program, but I'll, I'll go through and I'll, I'll describe how it works. I, from a broad perspective, what we're doing is we're wanting to turn the motor um, one rotation, wait a second, to turn it back, going the other rotation, wait another second, and then repeat. Uh, so we'll talk through how we're doing that. I'm using a state machine, just like we use in other examples. If you aren't familiar with them, you'll probably want to review that just a little bit. We uh, initially, we, we set the state in motion. We, we put one into step. That's the tag I'm using for the state machine. Uh, we, we turn that to one, and you'll see I'm also copying a one into output D3. And what that is, is uh, uh, the clear path motor has an enable pin and I'm turning that one on, so I'm, I'm enabling the motion of the motor. Uh, from there, what we do is we define a tag that we'll store the current location at, and we tell it where to go. And I've got 6400, which is the default for Technique's uh, motors, uh, number of steps per rotation. You can, using Technique software, you can uh, define other numbers uh, per rotation, but, that, but I believe that's the default. And then we give it a speed, which in this case equates to half a rotation per second. Uh, so I, I tell it where to go. I move to the next state. And then I, I wait for that location to be reached. I wait for location to be equal to this number. Uh, the next thing I do is I check C6, which I have connected to uh, a pin from the motor that tells me if the, uh, the destination, if the number of pulses I've sent has been reached yet. So that, that's good feedback that we know. Not only have we sent the, the, the required numbers of pulses, but we've also actually reached that destination. Uh, from there, I'm starting a timer. And you see I'm putting a zero into it, so I'm resetting the timer. And then I am waiting for one second to elapse. After it has, I, I tell it to go back to location zero. So that's going to cause it to go in the other direction. So the basic idea is uh, you go from a small number to a larger number. That, that makes it spin in one direction. When you go from a larger number to a smaller number, which you are able to go in the negative space, that's fine, uh, it's going to spin in the other direction. Um, so we go from there to step equals 4, where I'm waiting again for the destination I've told to move to to be reached. So destination, uh, the location is supposed to equal 0 when it's done moving. And again, the C6 will be... Uh, will be on when it's really reached there. Uh, there I'm resetting the timer again and I wait for another second to elapse, uh, at which point we move a 1 into step and we repeat the whole process. So I can program this and there's another video above that should show you uh, the motor physically moving and it's using this program to do that. And you'll, if you look at this location value, you'll see it going down, pausing for a second, going back up, pausing for a second. We could zoom out and actually see the, the different states as it's cycling through its program. So that should get you started.